Hey guys, my name is Matt. <clears throat> For those of you that don't know, I'm uh, typically cycling around the world on a recumbent trike, but it's Chinese New Year, and it's time for me to come home and see my daughter in uh, in Ningbo, China. I have done Chinese New Year for the last 10 years. Uh, over that, I moved to China in 2009, and from that moment on, uh, Chinese New Year has had a, a significance for me in uh, in China. It's full of parties, celebration, all sorts of food, community, family, and uh, alcohol and craziness. But today, it's quite different. Today, we have to deal with the coronavirus, and China's personality has changed quite a bit. I arrived back to Ningbo yesterday uh, on a flight to China from uh, Kuala Lumpur, which is uh, very strange because Everybody else was trying to get the hell out of China at this point in time if they have the opportunity and the means because uh, life here is uh, certainly not like uh, life is typically during the Chinese New Year holiday. I, I thought I'd make this video and kind of tell you a few things that I've been learning over the past couple of days uh, as this virus starts to proliferate through China. Uh, my wife and uh, daughter are Chinese. Well, my daughter's half Chinese. By connection to them and my extended family here, it's quite interesting how people are dealing with uh, a, a potential uh, pandemic coming uh, quite close to their town. Location-wise, I am uh, in a city called Ningbo, a small city. There's only like seven and a half million people here. You probably don't even know about it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly uh, packed city on the coast near, uh, near Hangzhou uh, and also near Hubei province. Hubei province is probably about 500 kilometers away from here. Hubei province is home to Wuhan. Wuhan is uh, the uh, ignition point for this coronavirus. It's where it really got started. The patient zero is from here. Uh, market zero is from here. Apparently it came from a uh, meat market, which can be a fairly dirty place, uh, a Chinese meat market where uh, potential uh, pathogens could, could be born. A lot of open meat, open birds, uh, uh, live animals, dead animals, uh, fish, uh, vegetables, all kind of mixing together in a cacophony of, uh, of, of marketable goods that people are buying and taking back to their villages and whatnot. If this uh, coronavirus was to have come maybe two months earlier, the story would be a little bit different. Maybe maybe three or four months earlier, because we sort of are in a holiday season right now in China where people are moving around. But ordinarily, they could probably have contained this pretty well. The problem is that during Chinese New Year in particular, which is coming up in a couple of days, the first day of it, People are shuffling around. They're getting days off before the holiday to go home, visit their family, and be with their family during the holiday. Migrant workers are going um, all manner of places, basically spreading all over the place. So this is probably the worst time to have uh, something like this kind of emerge. So everybody here is extremely paranoid. Paranoia is the uh, word of the day. Uh, even now I'm driving on this road and it's fairly empty. I'm uh, told this is my first ride out. I was told that once I leave this car, masks go on and the masks are high quality. And uh, yes, the masks are running out. Like uh, if you want to get a, a mask uh, from a store, uh, I don't know if there will be because uh, everybody has bought up every available face mask to protect themselves from transmitting a potential virus or uh, contracting a potential virus. Uh, the virus itself, the coronavirus, is an aggressive form of the flu. It's, it's basically flu-like symptoms. You don't realize you have it. It remains dormant for about two weeks, 10 days to 14 days before you even exhibit symptoms, and you can be uh, uh, transmitting the disease before that. That's why one of the reasons why it's so dangerous. You could actually be a potential uh, uh, transmitter of this disease and not even know it and not even feel bad until till it hits you. As a matter of fact, the medical director, one of the high ups, went to Ube province and covered up his face and he went into the hospital. He was inspecting the uh, situation and he contracted it. And the only way that he could have thought he contracted it 
is that uh, potentially it got in his eye as he was walking down the hall because he was wearing some high quality masks um, and he didn't realize that he was having it until he started exhibiting the uh, symptoms and that was uh, a week or two after he had left Ube. So a lot of this situation, it, it, we won't even realize how bad it is until um, weeks and weeks later, until everybody that has contracted it, didn't know it, ends up exhibiting the symptoms. That's another reason why it's so dangerous. I arrived here with a mask and according to the instructions I, I, given to me by, by, by Annie, I had to wear the mask and my clothes. When I got to the house from the airport, I had to disrobe, jump into the shower. All of my clothes that I wore had to be placed somewhere else because they were worried that an airport is a particularly nasty place where people from all over are uh, giving and getting potential bacteria. The government here is monitoring everybody coming in and out of Wuhan and Ube province in general. As a matter of fact, yesterday the development is that they shut down Wuhan completely, which is amazing. The capability of the Chinese government to do these kind of things is pretty amazing. They shut down the entire area, in and out, uh, all cars, trains, planes, everything is now, uh, well the planes are totally shut down. I don't know if in and out is completely shut down. I'm sure if you have some sort of um, special certificate, you might be able to get in and out, but it's on lockdown. They shut down the whole province though. I mean, Ube province is now shut down. And if you can think about a city with millions and millions of people unable to get home for the holidays during Chinese New Year, it's an incredible feat because everybody wants to get out and uh, you get and see their relatives. People from outside want to get in to see their relatives, but now there's it's totally shut down. Whether you're sick or not, you're stuck in Ube province, which is pretty, I, I don't know if you guys understand. It would be like cutting off New York City from the rest of the world, you know, a population such as New York City. Uh, but a province is huge. Province is, is almost like, uh, it's, it's the size of a state in America, um, if not bigger. Very, very, very scary and crazy. Uh, we got home. I, I got I got home yesterday from the airport, and I looked in the refrigerator, and there was nothing that I could eat. I'm on a I'm on a special keto diet, and so I told Annie, I says I, I need to get out and get some food, and she says, Well, we're not going out. As a matter of fact, uh, her nieces and nephews and brothers and sisters, they have stayed in their house uh, on voluntary quarantine for the past few days. They have put themselves uh, away from anybody else, any opportunity to contract anything, and they haven't even left their house, which is pretty incredible. I, I, I have been cycling around the world, voyaging to different places every single day, and I came back here, and all of a sudden I'm on, uh, I'm on house arrest, and everybody's on house arrest. Everybody is taking this very, very, very seriously. So I told I told them that I, I needed to go out and at least go shopping for some of the food that I can eat. And uh, so I'm headed to a, 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 a foreign high-end food market where I can get some food. And uh, I figured while I was driving there, I could talk about what the what's going on here and what the vibe is. I'm looking out, all I can see are people with masks. I imagine it's pretty crazy to be inside Wuhan or Ube province right now. Paranoia is probably running high. The government is doing some amazing things though. Uh, if you guys remember SARS, uh, it was a, a virus that was uh, pro prolific, uh, I don't know how many years ago, quite a few years ago. Um, but they built a SARS clinic, a SARS hospital. They built this hospital in nine days. An entire hospital from, from dirt to hospital in nine days. This was designed specifically to treat SARS patients. Uh, they're doing the same thing in Ube. Um, Annie sent me some video here. You can see it. That's uh, They're actually building a hospital. They're going to finish the hospital in six days from nothing to hospital. They're going to staff it with uh, doctors, uh, professional doctors from all over China. They're flying doctors in that um, that are risking their own health in order to treat the people in the hospital. The uh, virus is particularly ravaging on the elderly and, and, and aged people. 
So they're bringing in healthy young doctors that can treat people and hopefully not contract the disease themselves. And if they do, they can deal with it as a, as a healthy uh, physical being as opposed to being somebody in a weakened state. Like I said, it's sort of like flu-like system symptoms, only it's untreatable right now and it attacks the liver and uh, it, it attacks your organs and uh, it, can, it can really ravage you if you're not in uh, top form. Now, it's Chinese New Year, and if you have never been here during Chinese New Year, Chinese New Year is a time for celebration. There is not a dinner that goes by during Chinese New Year that isn't spent outside in some really, really busy restaurant. Hundreds of people cooking and uh, serving and um, dealing with you as a patron of the uh, establishment. There is events going on, there's parties, there's gatherings of people all over the place. And so to have such a disease come out at this particular time is crazy. My, my Chinese family is extremely interested in having these parties and doing these sorts of things. Every time I come home, it's a battle for me just to not gain 100 pounds. But this year is very interesting. Everybody's talking about the, um, the amount of closures, uh, the amount of uh, restaurants and places that are going to be uh, closed that uh, are going to probably go out of business uh, because Chinese New Year is an extremely profitable time for these places. They probably depend on Chinese New Year to bring in the bulk of their um, yearly income. Just like uh, in America, it's Christmas time is, is when, you know, uh, purveyors of gifts and, and food and, and, and things depend on Christmas. Could you imagine having something happen around Christmas time if Christmas is a big holiday where you are that uh, is going to restrict any sort of um, commerce or, or travel? I'm very curious to see how it develops. These are all predictions I'm having, but I, I'm guessing that it's going to have a huge um, impact on the economy. But something that's sort of unavoidable. You cannot avoid it because uh, they're trying to protect the masses. I think it's a good thing what China is doing right now. Um, and uh, hopefully they're able to contain this virus. Yeah, happy Chinese New Year. Our, our family, my family, my Chinese family has rescheduled all uh, gatherings. It's supposedly uh, nothing going on outside. Everything is gonna be contained in our respective quarantine zone houses. And uh, even me going out and uh, getting these uh, items from Olay is uh, a risk, a risk that I wanted to take because I really want to be able to have the food that I'm, I, want, <laughs> I need to eat during the time that I'm going to be uh, here with, uh, with family. It's quite interesting. And I wanted to share with you some of the uh, insights I've gathered the other day, just kind of what's going on inside China during this coronavirus Chinese New Year combination. It's, uh, it's incredible. Anyways, if you want to follow my journey, normally I'm not here. I'm normally on the road cycling around the world currently. My trike is in Kuala Lumpur. I left it there when I flew to here to China yesterday, coming into the infected <laughs> zone, so to speak. Um, but uh, fingers crossed, I'll be fine. Everybody in my family will be fine. We'll, we'll take this very, very methodically and make sure that uh, we're focused on, on the uh, attention to our health and make sure that everybody's good. Anyways, I thought you guys might be interested in hearing what, uh, what it was like living in China near uh, Udang province and hear some of the updates. As I was sort of surprised when uh, my Chinese family sort of started telling me about what's going on here and and the impact it's having on their Chinese New Year celebration and uh, their life in general.